Professor Robert McMillan has over 20 years experience in the information technology field. He has advanced degrees in IT administration and management along with over 50 industry certifications. He is the founder and former president of All Tech One, a Portland OR based consulting practice. In our runs Tech Publishing, a multimedia online education company that teaches aspiring IT administrators how to break into the industry. Previously, Robert was one, one of the co-host of the All Tech Radio Show syndicated on the West Coast. And he currently teaches college in the Portland area. Thank you for attending our conference. Attendees, this conference is being recorded. If you have a question for the speaker, please use the Q&A function to ask a question and our speaker will ask them at the end. Now, Professor Robert, you can share your presentation and please unmute yourself. Thank you very much. Uh, as mentioned, my name is Robert McMillan and I do teach college in the Portland, Oregon area. And I have been an IT consultant since 1997. Uh, so besides teaching, I do make courses for various different companies, uh, as you heard. And I also have uh, a YouTube page as ch uh, channel as well. Before we get too deep into the subject of student versus employee training and what's the best training that we should get, I should point out that student learning is very different from staff learning. Students learn general areas of subject matter and employees are focused on what you need them to learn, such as a software program or an operating system. And by the time you get your employees uh, at your organization, they've either earned their degree or are in the thick of earning their degree. My problem with staff training became apparent in the early 2000s as my business was growing. I hired all kinds of staff with the aid of one of my business partners. He used to be um, human uh, resources at PricewaterhouseCoopers. So I brought him in as a business partner and we hired staff that already had training as well as inexperienced staff as well. So what's the difference? Well, with the experienced staff, they had degrees, they had certifications, they attended many different types of trainings. They may have read a lot of books, uh, but one of the, the disadvantages was is that they had rigid ways of, of presenting that information. So they didn't really want to do anything in a different way. Maybe that would work better for our organization because they learned it in a different way themselves. Now, when I hired inexperienced staff, I had uh, a different kind of experience. A lot of the inexperienced staff, they had no degrees, uh, not very many certifications, if any at all. They hadn't read maybe a lot, not a lot of experience, but if they were very enthusiastic, I found they could still be very good employees because they could be molded in the way that I wanted them to be. So it took them longer to get up to where we wanted, but they ended up staying uh, you know, longer with us in general because uh, they were happy and we were happy. The most difficult of all was ongoing training. And as you all know, that's because our business is not static. So I found that the majority of usable knowledge turned over about every three years. And if you think about it, uh, new software programs, uh, they, they come out about every three years. Training certifications, they expire about every three years. And so that knowledge, uh, you know, had this three year cycle. As a matter of fact, when I teach college, I redo the course every three years. So what do we do with our staff when their knowledge is no longer valid? I found that in order for each staff member to stay relevant, I was going to need to get them trained. And I could do this in several different ways. I could send them to training. Uh, we just had a, present, a presentation from New Horizons. I've been to New Horizons many times. I've gone there and, and you know, taken certification tests and things like that. I've also hired people that, that had gone there. So you know, that is one way to do it. The advantage to this is that it was no longer my problem. Someone else was going to bring up their skill and knowledge. The disadvantage is that it can be very expensive. A cheaper alternative uh, was to buy them what they needed to train on their own. They could use work hours to do it if they wanted to, but they could read or watch videos basically you know, on their own without uh, having to go to training. Now this rarely worked because there was no oversight. We, off, we even offered raises. I mean, I offered them a dollar an hour for every certification they would get to anyone who would complete them. 
The only ones who took real advantage of this were staff who wanted more certifications so they could go on to other companies and, and do other things. The last option turned out pretty well, and that was to train them myself. Now, this wasn't the best option because I was the greatest trainer yet, but it allowed me to see for myself where each staff member was strong or weak in a particular area. It also showed me that every person learns differently. And, you know, over time, uh, I obviously was able to hone my training skills and I was able to get better at it. I was also to find out, uh, able to find out, you know, why it was that some students learned best and some students didn't, you know, by the way I was training them. So where should you send your staff to training? Should they all go to New Horizons? You know, like I said, it's a very good place to go if you have no internal training options. I've hired many employees who went to New Horizons. And as I mentioned before, I took many certification tests as well. They could also go to an intense uh, boot camp. And uh, the, you know, a lot of times you send them off to a luxurious island hotel for many thousands of dollars. Some of you might have even done this yourselves. I don't know. The employees loved that option. Uh, at the end of the training, usually it's about a week long, sometimes less, they take their certification tests, get certified, and they fly back. The problem with this is that as there's no real practical application, so the knowledge that they learned is soon lost unless they're starting to do the work as soon as they come back. They could also watch hours of YouTube videos, such as my educational channel on YouTube. I'm always amazed how many hours people spend on it. So if I look at the end of a year, every 365 days, I look at how many hours people spent on my channel, just my channel alone, not including all the other channels that, that teach technology. And a total of 15 years worth of video is watched on my video channel uh, as of last year. So in just one year time, 15 years of videos was watched. They, you know, it's, it's a real interesting thing that, that people do, but they tend to mostly come in to solve a problem rather than get trained, but it is an option. They still are going to need, uh, staff are still going to need what's called a sandbox computer on which to test all this knowledge out, uh, but it's certainly an option. Next, you could have them buy books. Books are great for staff who learn well this way, uh, or audio learners could do audiobooks instead. They could attend a local seminar. We have many of those in every major city, but if you're not near a major city, then that could be a big disadvantage. Now they could go to hands-on training at a vendor or a local college. And this is a great option since it's generally inexpensive and very focused if it's something your organization uses. So how do people learn best? Well, as a college professor and a trainer to my own staff, I found the following to be true about training employees. I think you'll find this really useful and this is the meat of my discussion. So take a break from your phone, stop looking at your email for a second. Uh, this is really important. If you want your staff, you want your students to learn in the best possible way. There are visual learners and they learn best through watching. It could be uh, videos or lectures or anything else that they can watch what other people are doing. Now, YouTube is a great example, of course, but there are other places staff can learn, such as LinkedIn Learning. And there are auditory uh, learners as well. And they, of course, do well by listening to lectures, audiobooks, or other recorded or live material. They do best when someone tells them what to do uh, you know, rather than shows them what to do. I have found of all the learners that are, uh, that are out there, the best, they're the ones that learn the best and retain the most knowledge are going to be the kinesthetic learners. There's just something about our brains when we use our eyes, our ears, our hands, and other skills to do something that we just remember it better. As an example, uh, all of us rode bikes as kids, I assume, uh, but if we got on one tomorrow, we would still be able to ride it around the block with little problem. Now, of course, you may be a little wobbly, may take a couple of seconds, but it would not take us very much time to get back on that bike, and maybe some of you even still ride bikes uh, to this day. Now, think about the amount of time it took you to learn how to ride a bike. That may have taken weeks. It depends on how often someone in your family might have, you know, uh, run alongside you. And, and of course, you've got a lot of scraped knees and things like that. But once you learned it, you learned it. And this is one of the reasons I have pushed hard 
for the extreme labs approach of learning. They learn the best for the majority of students by retaining the most information. <coughs> Excuse me. Now for years, we've been asking our students to use their own computer or college PCs when they come uh, to the colleges where I teach. They had nothing but problems and I spent half my time just troubleshooting underpowered computers. However, with Extreme Labs, I'm now able to teach twice the amount of content because it takes out the issues of working on their own computer problems. So how do we cover all these different types of learning in school? By applying all three types of learning, as a University of Missouri study suggests, the results have been phenomenal. My rating as a professor has gone up. My, refu my reviews from the college have exceeded expectations. Students have great things to say. And we've got, well, let's see. Let's see, uh, we've got, I got to back up a little bit here. There we go, there's the results. So an average of 4.9 out of five stars from the students, which is fantastic. Before this, I was around 4.2, 4.3 from the students. And of course, we exceeded expectations from the deans and the department chairs. And here's some, just some of the things that the students have said, which is really great and appreciated. And it keeps me going. It makes me want to get right back in again the next time a new term starts. You need to allow staff to learn in the ways that they are wired to learn and then they will be successful. My students are not forced to learn by reading. They can get the same knowledge by watching LinkedIn videos in each chapter. They aren't forced to learn by lecture. My lectures are optional. They can listen to recorded ones if they like or skip them altogether. At the end of the term, they just need to show me they understood what I was teaching them through quizzes and hands-on demonstrations. So you wanna look for training that fits your employees' ways of learning. Don't try to force employees to learn in a way they cannot learn. They only need to show that they are proficient in what you need them to know and do. So a lot of colleges and universities are losing students. But do you know what the largest and fastest growing university in the country is? It is Western Governors University, which is a nonprofit organization started by governors in the Western states. Various employers <clears throat> had gone to their state legislative bodies and they said that they don't have enough qualified employees. So the governors got together in these Western states and they created a new type of university. They only give you the final exam. They offer you to learn by reading, watching, and doing, but they don't tell you how you have to learn it. You just take the final exam and then you pass the class. And there is precedence for this. There's a lot of colleges and universities that say you can test out of a course. So this precedence gives them the ability to say, hey, we've been doing this for you know, decades. There's no reason why that we can't do this for all our classes. And this is really the way of the future. The old way of learning is just not going to continue happening. The old way of learning is saying that this is the only way you're going to earn a certification or a degree or you're not going to be able to do it. It's not equitable. It's bad for business because you end up with only a small amount of people who can run your company, uh, you know, since only a handful can learn that way. So there's really no equity. So what does this mean to employers? Well, I'm going to give you six different types of company training for staff and what I think of each of those. I'm going to rate those as a former employer as well as a current professor and as a student, a perennial student myself. These are popular places for employers to send their training. So keep in mind, you need to have equity trained as efficiently as possible, cost retention, and overall thoughts at the end of that as well. So here's all the different areas that I'm going to cover. Let's take a look. Let's start with colleges and universities. My first rating for a college and university, the equity is a seven out of 10. And that's uh, actually gone up because now most colleges and universities are available online as well as in person. Whereas before, when they were available only in person, only certain times a day, then it made it really difficult uh, for equity. Efficiency. Well, this is one of the downsides to colleges and universities. It's very slow. It can take months or years, depending on the subject in which you need them to get trained. The cost, 6 out of 10. 
uh, if you're just taking a class or two, like just say you're sending your employee to learn a specific thing, uh, then it's not going to be that expensive. If you need them to get a degree, then of course it's going to be a lot more expensive. But we're talking about staff training here, and that's probably not what you're going to be sending them to do. You're going to be sending them to learn something specific. The knowledge retention is very good with colleges and universities because it's a longer class and there's a lot of hands-on typically. Overall, it's not a great uh, solution for staff, as you can see, because it just takes a really long time, but there are some really good things about it, especially for people new to the workforce. Now let's take a look at training centers. The equity is not great if it's only available on premises. If it's also available online, hey, that's awesome. And a lot of them now are. So I could actually change that equity rating. Efficiency, it's really the best solution uh, if you want to get people trained in a really short amount of time. And that's because they do uh, really stress hands-on learning at most of these training centers. Uh, the cost is not a great uh, option. It is expensive. If it's a bigger organization, they don't really care. They just want that, that staff member you know, updated on that software or whatever it is as quickly as needed. Knowledge retention is very good because a lot of the hands-on, uh, but some learners may find that things move a little too quickly for them uh, based on their cognitive makeup. So make sure when you talk to your staff, you know, is, is this the best type of learner? What kind of learner are you? They usually know this is not something new to them. Overall, if you have the right kind of learner, then this is a really good option. Now we have boot camps. Equity, not great. It's uh, usually in locations require long travel times. So people with uh, accessibility issues or cost issues, it's just not going to be a, a great thing for them, especially uh, if they have close ties to uh, family, things like that. Efficiency is a five out of 10. It's going to vary by staff. And that's because some people are going to be able to handle this faster you know, way of training, and some people are not. The cost, this is going to be one of the most expensive. It is actually the most expensive option for most staff and businesses. So it's a one out of 10. Knowledge retention, a two out of 10, not good. And that's because they're jamming information into your prefrontal cortex, and not that many people can actually hang on to that information without context, without the ability to, to uh, also use it in their job. Overall, it's expensive, too much information in too little time. In my opinion, boot camps are really not a great way to go. Online video courses, equity, nine out of 10. Just about everybody has access to the internet. However, you've, in most cases, you're gonna have to know English in order to uh, be able to take those courses. There's not a lot of non-English uh, types of courses out there. Although there is a lot of subtitling going down that could help, but it's not gonna be as good. Efficiency, seven out of 10. Uh, that's because you can go at these at your own pace. So the employer's got specific uh, timelines required. That, that may actually cause an issue. The cost, a lot of these times are very inexpensive. I know LinkedIn Learning's about 30 bucks a month. Plural site's about the same. Uh, you know, there's a lot of them out there. Uh, some are a little bit more, some are a little bit less, um, but they're really not expensive. And you can generally go through a course in a week or two. Knowledge retention, eight out of 10, because even if that learner forgets what they learned, they can rewatch the course anytime they need it. I'll give you an example. Uh, so on my YouTube channel, I've got almost 4,000 videos and it's spanning for the last 10 or 11 years. Um, sometimes I come across an issue, I forget how to, to fix. I know I fixed it in the past, but I fixed so many things, I just forgot. So I'll go back online and I'll uh, do a search for how to fix this. And one of my own videos pops up and I end up teaching myself how to fix something that I'd forgotten how to learn. So overall, uh, this is a very cost efficient and overall good way for staff to become proficient. But you know, there's no live interaction with the teacher. So not all students are gonna be able to learn from this type of learning, but it's still a good option. Self-paced learning. This is where you give the employee a book, you give the employee a video, you give the employee or maybe even a course, so you sign them up for LinkedIn or whatever. Um, so equity, very good, especially if they're doing this at the office. Um, so uh, it means the staff decides what material they need to learn. Again, this is not new to the staff. You ask the staff, hey, what's the best way you learn? And you provide the materials for them. Efficiency. If you're not watching over them like a teacher would in a classroom, uh, these don't tend to be uh, as great uh, because the self-paced learning can really drag out. They can be 
distracted by things in the office. If they do it at home, they can be distracted by things at home. So uh, sometimes efficiency wise, unless you give them a deadline and say, you've got to learn this by this date, um, it tends to really drag out. Cost, of course, is very inexpensive, typically, not always, but usually. Knowledge retention can be high. Once again, the student can go back in case they forgot anything. Overall, it's a good option for staff who show an ability to stick with it. If you've got staff who are not that way, then this may not be the best with them. So if you're not seeing results fairly soon within the first few weeks, then you may want to go to that staff and say, hey, you know what, let's send you off to a class instead. This just isn't working out. Vendor training. Now, vendor training is different than going to a LinkedIn course or a Pluralsight course. This is where the vendor themselves will offer the training at a specific time, just as we're doing right now, right here. However, you'll be able to watch it at a later time, uh, which is great. Not all vendor training offers that. You, sometimes they'll just offer it when they offer it and that's it. Some training only happens uh, on, on site. And if you're not able to get to that location, you're not gonna get that training. So that's why it's a five out of 10 for equity. Efficiency, when you take it online, training not be very helpful unless the company has the software, the hardware in which the training is occurring. So if you're watching somebody do something, but you don't have that operating system, that software program, that piece of hardware to do it on your own, then you don't have the context you need to retain that information all the time. But if you do have it, it's fantastic. You can follow it along and you can see knowledge retention is if you have the product, it's fantastic. The cost, eight out of 10, usually free because the company wants to sell the product and support usually goes with it. But it's not always the case. I remember one time, one of my staff years ago came to me and said, he wants to get the highest end VMware certification. And I said, I thought, hey, that's really great. We have a lot of clients with VMware. Maybe we should do this. And um, I said, does it cost anything? Cause you know, it's vendor training and they want you to buy their product. So it's probably not gonna be too bad, right? Oh no. It's over 20,000 to get fully trained uh, on the, to get the highest end VMware certification. So I said, well, you know what? That's probably a little out of our price range. So I don't, let's go for something a little bit less. Uh, overall in person, no cost training. It's a great option if it is available. So those are all the different ways that uh, I, can, I suggest that you can uh, learn, that a staff can learn as well as the different uh, places they can go or do in order to get uh, their learning that they need.